G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Rip It Off The Card. How friggin' miserable is all this? <laughs> Everybody's in lockdown, mate. We're in lockdown. You're in lockdown. The place is going to the crapper. What the hell's the deal with that? Mr. Aaron, how are you doing all, sir? I, I'm doing okay. I'm doing as well as you. I'm in lockdown too. Far out. Eh? So uh, here we are, kids. So if you're watching this show, clearly you've got nowhere else to go, nowhere else to be. A couple of weeks ago, I was saying, get out and about, enjoy yourself, have fun. At least the Olympics are finished and uh, we're all back to being normal again, which is absolutely fantastic. But the fact that we're still here, the store is still closed. Aaron, how are you coping, old son? Everything's fantastic. I've, I've been um, working in the store, un unboxing stuff, um, uh, putting new displays up, contacting people and bugging them, trying to get them to buy things, putting my own little... Um, 10 minute live videos to show people what we've got in the store happening it's all it's all happening but uh but sadly sales aren't they're the only things that aren't happening at the moment well it's funny you should mention that eh? so uh yeah it's uh so all these people have just joined us straight away because clearly they've got nothing better to do as you well know now i actually got a like i'm glad you brought up this the the new show for those who haven't seen it this is aaron's new venture look at him he's an absolute legend He's plonking himself in front of the camera. He's given Rip It Off the Car to run for its money. So <laughs> if you haven't seen it, he had, I think it was 53 likes for this. This is his first video from two days ago already. What is the deal with that, mate? You're completely outstripping our show left, right, and center. Mate, I think we just need to pack up and just uh, let you just run the show on your own. Look at you go, mate. Awesome. Uh, I think um, that's how the Beatles broke up, wasn't it? <laughs> So for these people who are watching this at the moment, this is uh, Aaron attempting to, well, actually not attempting to, he's actually um, looking at uh, trying to promote the store. Uh, and if you can lip read that right now, he's saying, I'd rather be anywhere else except it's stuck, stuck in front of this bloody camera. Is that right? <laughs> isn't this isn't this all a bit meta? It's Aaron looking at Aaron. Should we do a review? Uh, he huffs and puffs too much. Oh, he holds products in front of his face. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> Come on, get this, get this Absolutely love it. You know what? I just feel like I could just like, like how about we just like, I, I'm just going to just put the sound on, shall we? So, this is <laughs> collect the, uh, and you can't even hear it. Look, you can't even hear him. Oh, dear. Absolutely love it. I, I, I can't, it's the train wreck thing. I just got to turn away and turn it off. But I just can't do it. So there you go. You know, oh, you dear. Know, I'm, I'm really glad that I changed my clothes because that would be embarrassing if I was wearing the same t shirt, wouldn't it? Yeah, very good. Look, already uh, Joel's asking about how much is Curly. So I don't think Curly's for sale, is he? Or is he? Curly's not for sale, no. no there you go. Uh, hang on. I just – David said he fell asleep when um, Chad did it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Look at I that. Think, He's still selling stuff. How good is I think this? What, I think what Dave actually is meaning that he took Chad to bed on his computer when Chad came on yesterday. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Greg said, he, yeah, he's doing a commentary track. There, you go. Actually, you can do a commentary track right now about you doing a video. How good is that? <laughs> oh, dear. Look at that. He's even frozen mid-frame. So, all right, fine. We'll, we'll now, get to I, I have something interesting to tell you when I was driving here today, and this is one of those things that only nerds pick up. There was, there was a car in front of me, and the number plate was B-E-S-K-A-R. -K and I'm wondering, is the person who got that thinking – it's short for best car, or is it best car? The Mandalorian um, armor was it? Was he a was he a Star Wars uh, fan? So yeah, that's a good one. Um, I don't know if anybody knows this, but I actually have a website that I keep uh, all to do with science fiction customizable car number plates. Uh, so if you just Google sci-fi car number plates, hopefully it comes up. Uh, it's like and a time spotting thing, but even nerdier. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love. It. I can't help it. I get really drawn into stuff like that, and. Um, so, like, for example, Vulcan, for example, you know, it could be the planet Vulcan. Oh, my God, it's a Star Trek fan, or it could be the company that manufactures gas heaters. So it could be either way. But best go, okay, I'll have to put that in my list. So how good is that? It's what, it is one of those one weird things. This is a T-shirt I saw. I was walking through Knox one day, and a guy walked up towards me, and he had, like, a lightning bolt on a yellow T-shirt, and it had, he'll save every one of us. And I said to him, oh, that's a very cool Flash Gordon T-shirt. And he looked at me, and he goes, what's Flash Gordon? And he'd obviously bought it thinking it was the Flash. <laughs> it happens sometimes. 
Exactly right. Uh, Jared's got it. Yeah, maybe it's supposed to be Beth's car. You are right. It could be completely unrelated. And, of course, that's the problem. You wind down the window with a person next to the car next to you. Go, oh, my God, you're a Mandalorian. You love it. And they just look at you stupid and go, what? And so uh, I did actually see one time a guy driving the car with another plate, YT1300, which is the Millennium Falcon build number, right? Now, that could have been any number plate in the universe, but he did actually have Star Wars stickers on the car. So when I got pulled up next to him, going, hey, well done. So I got the <laughs> gag and, uh, yeah, so that, well, I didn't look like a complete two, uh, tool in front of him. So there you go. Uh, even good old dicko has got something to say. He owns a single plate for over 30 years, best 20 feet. Oh, yeah, I agree with you, mate. So well well done. Got to get your customised car number plates. So uh, absolutely love them too. Very, very cool. Um, Gavin has said, fellow weirdos of nerdum. Oh, uh, would, you class, would you class yourself as a weirdo of nerdum? That's, so, that's a very high title to live up to. Yes, exactly right. So there you go. Now, I guess we should uh, move on before we get too excited. Now, we you know, obviously the store shuts. So I meant to ask you, so how are you coping with the, like, the fact that everything's closed and uh, again, still for another week? How are, you, how are you getting through? Well, like I said, you keep yourself busy. It's, uh, it's not fun for everyone, but there are people worse off than us, <coughs> New South Wales. But um, we're going okay. Like um, We'll get through it and see everyone on the other side. Yeah, exactly right. So, uh, yeah, a bit, bit impatient there. So, very, very cool. Um, can't get a personalised plate. It's my wife's car. No, can't get a personalised plate. It's my wife's car. Oh, Gavin, don't let that stop you. Just get the Yoda 01. You shove it on there. You know you want to. So, there you go. Now, a couple of weeks ago uh, when the store was open, it seems like a lifetime ago now, uh, we have the usual rioters make an appearance. Last week we had Sarah. And on the same day, we actually had a family come in who were actually watchers of the show. And we have them here. Who we got? Yeah. So um, this is one of our uh, our customers who came in, and he and he came in with his family because it was his birthday. So this is Damien and his wife Etta, and his kids Alex and Cassie. And he was nice of them to he was nice enough to bring them into the shop. Then he disappeared while they did um, birthday uh, shopping for him. So that's the kind of um, writers we like. Like the whole family's into it, and they spend all the money in my shop. So <laughs> fantastic. They did indeed, and I think he turned 50 this week too, so uh, well done for the good half century there, so uh, absolutely yes, happy, awesome. Happy birthday, so it was a... from, from happy birthday from Dags and, ourself, uh, and myself, yeah. so I hope it was a good one, even though it was in lockdown. Yeah, exactly right, so there you go. Uh, I like this comment from Jared, he's got a Joe jump on Twitch. Yes, we are still broadcasting on Twitch, no one's watching it, but at least they, <laughs> what the <laughs> hell, you got to do that. Very, very, very cool. Um, what, what you've got to do to help us is open up three windows and watch us in on Twitch, YouTube, and here, and it makes our statistics look way, way better. Yeah, because at the moment, we suck in comparison to, say, like Aaron's own video where he gets 53 freaking likes. Even his <laughs> wife not only liked it, but commented on it. <laughs> she doesn't give a shit about this show because it's the, <laughs> the dude by himself is like, yep, she'll sign up for that. <laughs> I, 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 even more embarrassing, my, my son gets online and records himself playing Minecraft and then puts it up on my channel, and that's got more watches than we have. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly right. It's a bit of a bit of a sad state of affairs. All right, but I guess we should uh, move along now. Uh, you've got some very, very exciting stuff. Let's see if our videos are working. So, yay, team. We all know you want to hear about it, so let's go. Nah, let's go back. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so we've got something very, very exciting happening around the place. What have we got uh, that's coming out, Mr. Aaron? Well, there's a couple of things this week. Which one have we got coming up first? Is it the, um, oh, this is fantastic. Uh, for anyone who grew up in the uh, 70s, the definitive uh, Wonder Woman would be the Linda Carter TV series that ran for a couple of series in the 70s and early 80s. And this is a uh, Prime One statue that's coming out of her. And I'll tell you what, it's very hard looking at the statue to tell the difference between uh, photos of her and photos of the statue. I was very impressed with this one. This is on pre, pre-order at the moment. Yep. What I couldn't work out is why the pose. It's an unusual pose. It's almost like she's doing the like the flicking of the hair thing. That's unusual. I thought maybe a, a yeah. I don't know. I don't get the pose. That's 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 sort of beyond me. But anyway, I, I think that is there is a series of publicity photos of her, and that is one of the photos that's um, they've they've taken it from. Um, they could have done a lot of different poses, but um, obviously they thought this one was going to sell really well. Now, for those who watched the show last, I think it was last week, you'll definitely get this joke. Uh, does it come with a pair of scissors? 
<laughs> not, the, not the scissors again. Oh, guys, jeepers, creepers. Not For only does it getting... come with a pair of scissors, but if um, if Rob Bubo buys it, we'll throw in the Chico, hole, 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 Chico Roll holder hand as well. <laughs> Yeah, for those who didn't see with the show, uh, yeah, it was an inappropriate pair of uh, Wonder Woman scissors. I agree with you, though. I think the model, the, the statue is fantastic. And, uh, yeah, Linda Carter, I think, would be very, very proud of that. So, yeah, very, very Is that available that's, yet? That's a pre-order at the moment. So uh, it, it is a big chunk of change. Uh, I think it's about $2,000. Uh, but that is a, I think it's a, a third scale. So not even quarter scale, bigger bigger than, a, than that. It's a huge statue. Um, and these yep. things even though they're expensive, tend to sell out on pre-order. You know what? It'd be cheaper to actually ring up Linda Carter and say, can I take you out for dinner one night? Because <laughs> that's a shitload cheaper than 2000 bucks. But, uh, yeah, that is very, very, very interesting. Very interesting fact, you, you couldn't do it. They've tried to get um, Linda Carter to conventions here, and one of the reasons she can't do it is um, she can't do the flight because she smokes and um, couldn't do it without smoking. Doesn't she have an invisible jet or something? So there you go. Um, Michelle follows her on Facebook and she has a post about it yet. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, she was actually. And uh, yeah, absolutely yeah. awesome for and it sure. Was good, good to see her back in um, Wonder Woman 1984. That was something I didn't see coming and was nice to see. Very, very cool. Now, for those who do like uh, going on airplanes and like a bit of re reading material, got some of this. So these are things, again, that have shown up on my Facebook feed. And I did show a couple of people these because I was like, are these the real deal or not? Because um, sometimes scam stuff comes up and it does seem like they're the real deal. But there's an artist in America, which probably means a bunch of people in Asia in a sweatshop, who are getting the original paperback editions of these books and they're rebounding them um, in leather and then doing custom designs on the front to make them a lot more classy than the paperback editions. Um, and because they're so nice and the labyrinth actually looks like the labyrinth that Sarah reads in the, um, in the movie, because they're so nice, I thought I'd throw them up because they are unusual and you don't see stuff like this much. And it is the kind of thing that um, I think a lot of people would like to add to their collection. You don't see much never ending story stuff. You see yeah, the with the never ending story book because it's too small. You expect it to be like 50 million pages because it is a never ending story after all that. So, well, uh, well, the, there's so much story in there. The um, the, the movie for the never ending story is about a quarter of the first book and then it goes on a whole lot further. So, um, interesting, very good. And we've got to do a shout out to good old cheese. He's actually three viewers on Twitch. How good is that? <laughs> <laughs> wow, oh, there you fantastic. Go. every week we're getting one more. Like, that's amazing. Very, very cool. Uh, you're talking about those particular books. I actually knew, uh, I don't sort of see her anymore, but she was actually able to buy a complete replica of the uh, Book of Shadows from Charmed, and it was the full 100% thing with the pages, the whole. It cost her a 1000 bucks just in shipping because the thing weighed like 20-something kilos. And um, when you saw it, because you, you sort of don't realise in the show how big the book is, it's physically quite large, but all the pages had all the spells, and it even had blank pages where you could write your own spells in. And I'll tell you what, I only saw it once, because uh, you know had to put away, but I thought, my God, that was just magnificent, and that was yelp, Jesus. Did the spells ago, work? Yeah. Hey, did the spells work? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I was curious to see if there ever there was going to be a spelling mistake. That'd be quite funny, wouldn't it? Hey, eh? um, there you go. Uh, yes, William, there is a guy in Netherlands who makes books like those. Yeah, so they can be very, very cool. They just it's just a nice way of presenting them, which is uh, very, very grippy. So, uh, oh, actually, Michelle's also said the same thing. Uh, a cheeky. A chicky in Germany, <laughs> not just a chick, but a chicky. So, so I, I have yes. seen other stuff like this in on Etsy. You see a lot of sort of um, fan made stuff. There's uh, River Song's diary from Doctor Who that people have recreated yeah. that, and other other things. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So you are right, Phil. They did actually do a replica of the book uh, for the DVD set, but this was a replica of the actual book itself, the physical book, which is much bigger than the DVD box set. So there you go. There's, Guess there's who's joined us? Sorry, you're going to say something. Oh, I was just going to say, Jeff, though, I'd know this, but there's some great DVD special editions that are in replica books. The Necronomicon from Evil Dead is a great DVD edition as well. Lovely. We're just going on this massive tangent about freaking DVDs when we didn't need to. Okay, <laughs> the vial is with us. Okay, the most important thing about the vial, I'm not interested in what he's going to say because it's now time for a bit of the vile file. Oh, wow, how's that for timing? So what are we violating again tonight, Mr. Aaron? Well, this time... Um, Lord Vile has got another Sith Lord that's helping him out, Daft Sidious. I said that right. Not Darth, Daft Sidious. We're looking at um, Star Wars Episode One toys 
uh, this week. And as you can see there, that was back in 99 where they first hit the toy aisles and you could go into Toys R Us and toy shops and there'd be an entire aisle just of, it was red, it was Star Wars, it'd be full of people buying stuff and then the movie actually came out and there'd be tumbleweed rolling down the aisle. <laughs> 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 But Star Wars um, Episode One was quite big and it was so big that a lot of naughty companies did bootlegs and knockoffs. So tonight we're looking at this series of um, bootlegs from China. And the, the interesting thing about uh, these ones, I'm not quite sure if everyone can read the names on them, but the names are quite interesting. The, the figures themselves are quite ugly. They're like... Um, the original figures knock off and maybe, you know, cruder uh, in finish. So, you know, you'd obviously see they were knockoffs. But um, some of the highlights are you've got, um, as I said, da Daft Sidious. The Actually, Sith if you want, I can bring out the magnifying glass of truth and read a couple of them out for you. So starting at the top way up here, okay, it's not Obi-Wan, it's Toby one, okay. Uh, over here, it's not Qui-Gon Jinn, it's fly gone gin uh <laughs> the emperor which is this one here is it's daft sidious like daft punk right go figure that one uh <laughs> mace window who's, who's right here is mace window as in like a glass window um uh, okay padme i think it's meant to be it looks like anakin actually uh it's no, a little that's girl that's anakin. yeah so it's like annie, annie is a little girl so there you go uh okay so good old kiati mundi is just conehead uh, over here, uh, what I was just what as in W H A T. It's like what was that? Um, good old Boss Nass is upright slug. Yeah, I've known a few fanboys a bit like that. R two three PO. Yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, so um, Chancellor Valorum is glorious Star Lord. Who knew that Valorum was in uh, Gal Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh, Queen Armadala's just Queen, and uh, and Darth Maul. You can say this one. Who's Darth Maul? It just says Dennis. Dennis! Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously Dennis is the Phantom Menace. Works for me. So there you go. Absolutely fantastic. So what do you reckon about these particular uh, collectibles, dude? They have been well and truly violated. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that is an absolute... Yeah, way to go, knockoffs. Absolutely awesome. So how cool is... <laughs> Uh, that uh, does any have a red wig? Uh, no, does any have a red wig? No, I don't think so. So, the uh, upright slug, yeah, exactly right, in class, as opposed to a horizontal slug. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I can tell you a funny story very, very quickly. Uh, back in '99, uh, actually, might have been '98, uh, when uh, shit, who had it? Um, I forgot who had it, who had the license for Star Wars in Australia and uh, Gaffney International. And the whole whole group of us from Star Walking got to go to their offices to see all the brand new merchandise for Phantom Menace before it had been released to the public. It would be it was like prototype, right? And we're all like slobbering, like, oh my god, there's stuff everywhere. How good is this? This is gonna be the greatest thing in the entire universe. And it kind of wasn't, but we got to see it before anybody else because they wanted to gauge our reactions as fans as to what we thought. Yeah, at that point, only the trailer had come out, and that was it. And it was like, mate, that was like the coolest thing in the universe. So uh, very, very, very cool. So you're responsible for how much Episode 1 stuff we got, basically. Yeah, well, it was very funny because we can laugh. When we saw the Jar Jar Binks stuff, we thought, oh, that is gross. How good is that? <laughs> Who knew? So, uh, Upright yeah. slug. I love it. But, uh, yes, Dennis the Phantom Menace, I've oh, got to love it. So, yes, very, 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 very cool. All right, so we're going to move on to the next section of our particular discussion. And we've got a good one uh, this week and because it's, like, been very, very topical for the past couple of weeks. And I've got to push a button and let's get into it. Ooh, baby, do you know that All right, so what is our theme for this week? Well, because later on we're looking at hot toys, I thought we'd do something, oh, no, not related at all. Olympic memorabilia. <laughs> very, very cool. Now, for those out there, I know some people don't give a rat's ass about the Olympic Games, but it was a bit of a big deal last week, and, you know, I spent two weeks watching it. Out of the, all the whole time I was on, I only missed one day, uh, and I spent, like, up to 10 hours a day watching the stuff. So we thought we'd go through a bit of Olympics memorabilia. And, of course, just to be a complete prick, I've decided to put an extra one in there. So instead of five, we've got six. So uh, there you go. So let's limp it on. So what do we got? Get your limpies happening. Go for it. Well, it will be really interesting to see um, what people come up with the prices for these because I'm truly thinking there a lot of people who watch this show 
aren't going to be as expert in sporting memorabilia as they are in some of the other things. So this is, going back to the Melbourne Olympics in 1956, this is an original poster for the Melbourne Olympics. Um, now, you've got to remember as well, if you were going to sell Olympic memorabilia, the best two weeks to sell it were probably the last two weeks because that's when people are all hyped up about it. So some of these prices might be a bit different from what they usually go for. Yeah, and I do appreciate everybody's patience at the fact that we are going to be putting up with Olympic stuff because, as I said, some people really don't go for the Olympic Games at all. But uh, anyway, if you are watching this uh, and you've not seen this before for the first time, these are sold items. Just write down, as some people are doing already, what you think this poster sold for. And if it's an original 1956 poster from the Melbourne Games, uh, that is a very, very cool. So let's see what people have had to say. All right, Ange is doing the Ange thing. At one, okay, 1,100 and whatever. Okay, Gavin has said uh, 38. Jared is a 2,000. Remember, the thing is older than nearly all, actually all of us on this particular show. Uh, Mark is 500. Joel is 709. It's an interesting one. Um, uh, and I agree with you, Thomas. Yep, yeah, the A-team for the team. Uh, Greg, two bucks. Oh, Greg, mate, you disappointed me. Stick a Doctor Who logo <laughs> on there and watch the price jump up. Uh, Carol's at 2,500. Christy's at 50 bucks. Thomas is at 1,800. Colin is at 1,000. William is at 100. Um, where are we? Rob is at 500, Dave is at 65, Joe is also at 65, Joshua is at 150. Um, Joe Bugger 69, I don't know what that means. So, uh, Phil has said 750. Oh, good old April, all the way from Scotland once again. Uh, I don't know how Scotland, uh, Great Britain did very well in the Olympic Games, but I'm not sure about Scotland specifically. 650, violating this at 1956, the most obvious price to put in. Uh, so there you go. So we've got a bit of a mixed bag of bunnies here. So it's 1956, an original poster from when the games are on. And if you have one from the Sydney uh, Games, and of course you get the one from Brisbane in 2032, that's a nice trilogy of posters, that's for sure. All right. So what do you reckon it went for? Excuse me. Original Olympic poster, 1956. That alone is absolutely fantastic. It went for a whopping 850 bucks. How disappointing is that? What do you reckon, dude? Yeah, well, it's one of those things where movie posters from that era, like a a cult movie would go for a lot more than that. I guess um, sporting memorabilia is one of those things where it's it's limited, I guess, to the people who are in Melbourne, really not globally like some other stuff, I would think, anyway. Yeah, and as I think Phil's got this at 750 he's got an, had an extra 100 bucks. As I said to, before we put this show on, as I said to um, Aaron, uh, I don't believe Olympics merchandise really has a lot of value at all anywhere. It's, it's, just, it's just one of those things that just doesn't seem to be of interest, as you said. You know, when the games were on shore, it's very, very popular and all the rest of it. But in between the four years, no one really gives a shit. So uh, it's a bit sad, but you never, never know. But this might be very, very cool. What have we got? Now, this is really interesting. This is an original uh, Sydney Relay Olympic torch. So I don't know if you remember when, this, when the Sydney Olympics were on. Everyone in Australia could apply with a little story if they wanted to be a, a torch bearer and, you know, run a couple of hundred metres before they pass it on. And I think everyone who got to do that, got to keep their torch, which means there's a lot of them out there that turn up on eBay from time to time. So if you had bought the poster, this would be another great thing to sort of mount on the wall in your Olympics room or man cave, wouldn't it? Well, my girlfriend, uh, or an ex-girlfriend, actually carried one of these, and uh, I knew that she was an ex-girlfriend because she was an old flame. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> only joking. Um, all right, so, uh, but I agree, uh, yeah, there's be. It's 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 interesting, isn't it? Because you look at this and you go, oh my god, there would have been thousands of these back in the day. But what do you reckon this is worth now? All right, so obviously Cal's impressed the three thousand dollars. Um, Joel's at seven oh eight. Oh, hang on, the screen has just jumped massively. Give me a second, kids. Uh, where are we? Christy is at fifty cents. So clearly she's not an Olympics fan at the moment. Uh, Gavin is at twelve hundred. Uh, if it could be regassed, yeah, probably can be. Actually, it would be worth more. Probably can be. Um. Very, very cool. Uh, where are we? Twelve fifty from Joshua. Marcus at four hundred. Thomas is at one seventy five. Williams at two fifty. Uh, where are we? Ange is at all these twos. Uh, Rob is at two fifty. Um, <laughs> so she was on hot stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, violating this is at seven fifty. Absolutely awesome. Uh, Michelle is at six hundred. And once again, Carol's very impressed with it. So there you go. So you could have actually bought yourself a proper torch. Uh, cheese noodles at four twenty-five. Jared's at four twenty-five. I think Jared and cheese are the same person, aren't they? Philip is at <laughs> five hundred. Uh, Colin has also said uh, five hundred. Com- you got a Commonwealth Games torch. Uh, I class as a the Commonwealth Games to be like the the poor sort of like 
ugly cousin of the Olympic Games when you sit and think about it. So, uh, uh, yeah, yep, Jared, well done. Uh, yeah, the Commonwealth Games just doesn't cut the mustard. It's like going to, you know, you've got Aaron's collectibles and you've got all these other stories. <laughs> Mate, you stick with Aaron's. What can I say? All right, so what do you reckon this went for, kiddies? Um, Sydney 2000 Olympic torch. There would have been millions of these handed around back in the year 2000. Of course, that was 21 years ago. And, of course, it went for a whopping 3800 effing dollars. Yeah, and the, the interesting thing is there were a few of these on eBay over the last couple of weeks, and they all went for a comparable price. So that is about the price you could get an Olympic torch for if you wanted one. Well, guess what, Carol? If you had it added, added an extra 800 bucks, you would have got it. So uh, there you go. Um, yeah, I've got to admit, I was impressed. But I still think that in the middle between two years from now, that price will plummet and then it'll just pick up again in 2024. So, well, imagine, but, uh, imagine how impressive that would be if someone asked for a light and you pulled out that and um, <laughs> the time. Hey, this isn't a torch. Now, that's a torch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an expensive SIG lighter. But, yeah, that is very, very, very cool. And uh, Carol is uh, very, very happy uh, for buying something that you didn't buy. Absolutely love it. Now, you've had the Australian torch, right? So in the same theme, let's go back an extra 30 years prior to that, and it's this one. Oh, how good is this? So this is this is a, a Moscow Olympic torch, and this is interesting. This will this will test um test your skills because because it's older, it's rarer. But is it worth more because it's Moscow instead of Australian? So would the patriotism of being Australia make the Sydney torch go for more, or would the rarity of a Moscow torch go for more? All, all things that I'm sure we're interested in in knowing. Um, but this is sold on Australian eBay, so. Will this be as popular as the Genghis Khan hit Moscow or will it be uh, one of those Greg King $2 garage sale torches? And you'd think it'd be worth a fortune in America because they didn't go to the games. They all boycotted, if you remember. So there you go. I love it, Dave. Yeah, the Moscow lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, yeah, so this is 41 years old now. So if I get my maths right, or 51 years old now. Am I 51, 41, whatever it is? Yeah, anyway. So, uh, yes, you would have to think this is quite rare. All right, so Colin said 500. Jared has said 4,200. Angus has given me all these threes. He's just making this up. Michelle has given all these sixes. Joshua said 2,000. Gavin said 50. God, God that's not, not very optimistic. Christie's at least put some extra dollars in, so she's got 550. April has said 12,000 bucks. Look at that. Carol, who got the last one, who wants to complete the collection, is $6,300. Uh, Phil is at 1,500. William's at 1,500. <laughs> I love it. Plus a bottle of vodka. Put that in at the top and watch the flames fly. Um, 350 from Rob. Uh, where are we? Joel has said 707. Uh, yes, it was actually Soviet. So, uh, yes, it's not Russia. It's not uh, Democratic Russia. It's Soviet Russia. Uh, Thomas has said 75 bucks. Violating the Soviets at 350 for Mr. Vile. And one, <laughs> 150 from a knockoff from China. Uh, actually, you do wonder if the Beijing Olympic Games, their torches were actually made down the road in China or whether made in Thailand or something. So, uh, yes, very, very cool. Um, but I was surprised when I saw this. I thought, man, these things would have to be as rare as hen's teeth these days. So there you go. Anyway, 1980 Moscow Summer Olympic torch. What do you reckon this would be worth, considering the Australian one was worth a few grand? It would be worth that. More than the Australian one. So I think it's interesting because I don't think anyone really put more than the Australian one. But um, obviously, I guess if we're in Australia, you might get the Australian one easier. So this one is the one that um, would be harder to get. Interestingly enough, you could get the, um, uh, was it the Seoul or the, uh, yeah. th there was another one recently and that was under a hundred uh, under $1,000, which was the cheaper one. I think it was the Barcelona actually was the cheapest one on there. But the Barcelona is back in 92, if I remember. So uh, there you go. Yeah. Um, so there is um, obviously people who try to collect one of everything because all of them seem to have sold. But uh, I just found it interesting. That's a, an area of collecting I would never have thought of, Olympic torches from different eras. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jared got this. He just has to add an extra 300 bucks. Uh, you're right. It's not for everybody. Uh, and, of course, once you, you get all the recent 20, 30 years worth, but then you start going back further and further and further, and then it'd be, like, next to impossible, you would think, because I don't know how publicly available these things were. So, But I saw this, and I thought, mate, even I was impressed. So uh, there you go. All right, we move along. Look at that. Sydney 2000s back in the game. What have we got? So this, this crosses a few different collectible areas because people collect – um, coins and uh, medals. We saw last week the piece of uh, silver that was looked like a piece of Beskar steel uh, went for a bit, but this is a Sydney 2000 Olympic gold and silver proof millennium coin collection with extras. And the extras is, of course, all the display boxes and paperwork that originally went 
with it. Now, these were quite an expensive piece when they came out. Do we think that they've appreciated in value or do we think they've depreciated in value? Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, we'll be interested to look at O torches from eBay, not AU. See if it's that. Yeah, it's a good question, Michelle, about uh, the prices in different countries. Um, yeah, you, some of them would be in higher demand than others. There's no denying that. And because uh, Olympic Games do tend to sort of come and go over a period of time and you do tend to forget them. So for your own country, you probably think, yeah, I've got to get one of those. But for other countries, you'd be going, who cares? You would think. All right. Uh, Gavin has said for this, uh, 7856. Christy, is that 10? 10 bucks, so she's not a happy camper about this stuff. Carol said 500. Michelle is at 2275. Jared has said 6430. Oh, okay, Christy, thanks for that. 100. Yep, no worries. Uh, 28 for Joshua. Rob has said 500. William said 3000. Sorry, William said 3000. Mark has said 5000. Wrong button. Angus has given me all these fours. Uh, Colin's at 1500. And Phil is at 2000. April all the way in Scotland is at 600. You don't have to put the, the pounds in, by the way, April. I, I think the 600 will be fine. Thank you. Uh, violating the Sydney Olympic Games in 2000 was the viol at 150, and Thomas is at 300. So there you go. But there's a lot of stuff here. Silver proof millennium coins collection and extras. Got to love those extras. What can I say? So, uh, yeah, very, very, very cool. All right. So what do we reckon this went for? Uh, it all looks very, very groovy. Lots of stuff there. It went for a whopping, look at that, nearly nine wow. grand. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm sure that's got to got to be to do with the worth of the metals that's in the set with gold and silver. I have to say, um, just as a collector, if I had the choice between that set of coins and an Olympic um, torch, I'd probably go for the Olympic torch. But there you go, the money's in the coins. Very cool. Uh, and I think Jared also got this, but he's short like a couple of grand. So there you go. Uh, yes, absolutely fantastic. So there you go. All right, well, now we've got. Only got two. Now, normally we do five. We're doing six, and we're doing six for a reason, right? Because it's absolutely awesome. And I agree with you, Dave. It belongs in a museum. Uh, and I agree, maybe the metal. You melt the metal down and use it for something else. So, uh, yes, very, very cool. Uh, yeah, all right, let's move on. So this is very exciting. Oh, check it out. <laughs> now, here's one of those things. It's a collectible that sort of anyone can get into the game with uh, a lot of 10 Woolworths Aussie Heroes Olympic Game Sticker Packets unopened. So if you hadn't got your uh, full set of Aussie heroes and coals run out of them, you can go online and you can buy some empty packets um, either for you or for the kids who are trying to complete their set. Um, we have seen before the incredible price of Ushis that go up and down and Marvel collectibles that go up and down. And we're right in the middle of the Olympics. How much do you think people are scalping the Olympic hero stickers for? Mint in box too, by the way. Keep that in mind, kitty. So there you go. Uh, Jared, hang on. Well, Jared said ten dollars. Michelle said fifteen. Christy, fifty cents. Holy guacamole! Ange has finally put in a proper number of two bucks. Uh, twenty for William. Um, oh, Ange has got a twenty on opens. <laughs> <laughs> Colin at a hundred. Carol's at a hundred. Uh, Rob has said four. Um, Greg King, oh, <laughs> two bucks, I love it. He's got to offload his two bucks. Joel's at 704. Mark is at 50. Gavin is, hang on, Gavin has said 30 cents. <laughs> Remember, someone put these on eBay, right? Uh, where were we? Uh, jo was it? Joshua's at 100. Phil is at 250. I want to see, oh, here we go. This is what I want to see. Tom is at 3,000. Good on you, Thomas. Go with some big numbers in there, son. And violating these packets at 15 bucks is the file. Absolutely love it. There you go. It's from Woolworths. Hey, eh? I've got to love that. Oh, uh, sorry. April has said 300. So, yes, very, very cool. You're right. The postage might be higher than the item. What do you reckon these went for? Completely unopened, mint in box. They went for a whopping one cent. <laughs> <laughs> one cent. So um, even even uh, Spider in his pocket, Greg King overpaid for this lot. <laughs> um, Gavin, 30 cents against them, 29 cents back. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit, isn't it? I was like, why would you? Like we've just, said, just chuck them out. I mean, why would you even bother? It's like it's just a waste of time. So there well, you go. Who, whoever got that got a bargain because I was looking at some of the auctions and some people were selling a lot of 10 and they were getting 10 cents for them. Yeah, that's just that's just complete rubbish. It's like it, 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 three dollars postage, and it's like, mate, just just throw it out the window, be done with it. So there you go. All right, now we have a six item for a reason. Okay, uh, this is actually uh, need everybody. Yeah, well done. So this one, I think, will be very interesting to see what people think of it, and those who really love their Olympic games will go completely nuts over this. Check it out. So, 
this was I, I thought was one of the best things I found. Um, this is uh, their, their original signatures. This is a uh, Sydney 2000 uh, water polo ball signed by the gold uh, medal team. So I don't know if everyone remembers, you know, back in 2000, uh, water polo was one of those surprise sports that we won a gold medal at. So everyone was um, uh, mental about this for a while and the, the, the team was doing a lot of publicity. And this is one of those things that um, must have gone out to someone's collection. It's an original water polo ball signed by the, um, by the team members. So there you go. So how good is that? The water polo gold medalists, no less. So, uh, yeah, so what do you reckon that is worth? Um, Dave, it might be – It doesn't. the signatures might be real. It doesn't matter if the ball's real or not. So uh, there you go. Um, where are we? All right, Jared has said 380. Um, and where are we? Uh, Ange is at $2. Chrissy said 250 Carol, 2000 He's gotten a bit excited over the ball. 2000 bucks. Phil's at 250 Thomas is at 4500 bucks. Well done. Joshua's at 1500 Michelle is at 85 Collins at 50 Mark is at 60 Williams at 12, uh, 1200 Hang on, I think it's Williams at 1200 Gavin said $2.40. Oh, jeez, that's nice. Um, another attempted in out joke. <laughs> Very good. I got that. Uh, 703 from Joel is like, hey, I get the joke. Yeah, it belongs in a museum. I get a lot. So there you go. Rob is at 1000 so there you go, the gold women, gold medalists from uh, the Sydney 2000 Games. If you're going to win a gold medal, at least win in your own home country. Uh, violating the women's uh, volleyball team um, or water polo team. Water polo? Yeah, team, uh, is the Violet 1965. Moneybag Sullivan, uh, who could buy a couple of these, is at 450. Uh, April is also at 450. So there you go. Very, 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 very cool. All right, so what do you think this is worth? A water polo gold medalist team signing the ball must be worth a fortune, according to Carol. Mate, you can sell a kidney for this. It was sold for a whopping 99 cents. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of those things where I don't know why that didn't go for more or water, water polo isn't the most popular sport or, or what, but here would be my, my long game looking at the prices over the past, the past couple of weeks. For the next three years, look for cheap, Olympic memorabilia, and then for two weeks, uh, when it, when the next Olympics is on, whack it all back on eBay and watch it go through the through the roof on um, your original purchases for it. But um, I think that's uh, one of those things that just shows you just can't tell what stuff goes goes for. Exactly. And Ange, after putting all these bullshit numbers in for the rest of the of the auction, finally got one, and he gets a dollar back. So. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? But uh, if you were a member of the water polo team, you would be a tad shattered to know that, uh, hey, the thing that you signed back then and you were like the superstar and you had stamps uh, produced for you, <laughs> the ball's worth nothing. So uh, just, that's, that's, It that's really shows shocking. how how fleeting um, celebrity is, I guess, especially with athletes uh, who sort of are at the Olympics and that's the height of their career. What I do find interesting for weeks and weeks and weeks, we've had all these amazing collectibles on and Carol loses it at the Olympic memorabilia, which we kind of did as a joke. <laughs> so. It would have took, she would have been watching Bachelor, it was it The Bachelor and all that. It's, oh, no, I've got to watch the Olympic play. <laughs> <laughs> Torn away from Master Chef and Beauty and the Geek and the bloody block and all these other bullshit reality shows. Got to watch the eBay section. <laughs> Um, and I do wonder now, based on that, uh, people who come back to the Olympics, like right now, uh, they're signing all this stuff, and in 20 years' time, all that will even be worthless, even for the gold medalists. So, yes, it is disappointing. So there you go. All right. Uh, yes, and let's get on to something a little bit more our cup of tea, shall we, kiddies? So uh, us two are funny. Well, we <laughs> – in our own way, yes, we are. So there you go. Very, very cool. All right, let's get into something that's a bit more of our cup of tea, Mr. Aaron. What are we gas-bagging about tonight? Hot toys. And I don't mean like toys that are so hot they run out of the door. We're talking about the brand Hot Toys. Um, and one of the feedbacks that I've got in the shop is people uh, really like the show and what we talk about, but they say it's a bit skewed to um, old collectibles from the 70s and 80s and don't, don't we like anything that's new. And I love Hot Toys. These are one of the things that um, I really love collecting. Uh, they're pretty new and they uh, cover a whole lot of different genres. So we're going to cater for those people who, who do collect stuff that come out at the moment and look at the, the fabulous company that is Hot Toys. Now, one of the things I have to say, though, in the picture there, we've got oh, um, a picture sorry. of sorry, yeah. uh, Boba Fett and uh, the Mandalorian. 
And like hap what happens a lot of the times when I start putting these presentations together, there are so many Star Wars hot toys. We've split this discussion into two and we're going to do one whole show on Star Wars hot toys down the track. This is just looking at other hot toys in general. So tonight we're going to cover a lot of different genres from um, comic books and superheroes to sci-fi, horror, classic movies, um, a bit of everything really. So if you're into your realistic one six scale toys, tonight is the episode for you. Um, before we get there, good old Phil said, just get on with it. You want something more interesting? How about I just go back to some more Olympic stuff, Phil, just a second. <laughs> <laughs> Patience. We'll get there. It's all good. Anyway, let's get into it. So, yes, off we go. So uh, these are the original Hot Toys. Um, the ones in the middle there, the company started up in 1999, and they weren't even called Hot Toys at the, the time. They were famous type. Uh, so you've got like the famous type actor and the famous type uh, director, which is uh, George Lucas there, but they weren't even licensed. So they didn't have um, the characters they were meant to be, which uh, Mission Impossible, Ethan Hunt, and then the middle one is Neo from The Matrix. And then, like I said, we've got George Lucas. And the interesting thing is they were all right as toys, but hot toys are kind of known for being... Uh, amazing dead light, dead on likenesses and hundreds of accessories and um, being the top of the field in everything they do. But when they started out, I guess they didn't really stand out from the crowd at all. There was a lot of 12-inch um, figures around at the time. And looking at these ones, I think um, Hasbro were producing in their Star Wars range uh, figures that had just as many accessories and, and looked as accurate as these ones do. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but when they did the Neo figure... They, uh, people who bought it thought, oh, does he do the bending back bit? We got the, what do you call it, the bullet time. So they went snap and they broke the thing in half and go, oh, it doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> but that would be funny. And you go, oh, hang on. I thought it did that. And it's like, ah, no, it doesn't do that at all. So there you go. Very cool. Sorry. No. And um, they, they kind of were doing those toys and they found a niche in um, highly accurate military figures and um, other figures like the firefighter one there. So um, militaria is another area of collecting, and I haven't really gotten into that. The only thing that crosses over with militaria with me is um, the action figures. If I, occasionally I'll see a collection that has got some of the um, military figures in it. But Hot Toys found a niche by doing um, high-end action figures for different militaries and um, different uh, battalions around the world. So you can see up the top there, there's a, a Tomcat pilot. And then down the bottom, you've got different infantry. And what they kind of were famous with was for at the time, the toys were fully loaded. So they started doing the thing where you wouldn't just have the guy in the suit and the gun, you would have um, the backpack and all the things that go in the backpack and you'd have the belts and the belts all worked and stuff like that. So they found, even though that that was a higher production cost for them, they could sell the products for more and people would pay for it because people who collected that kind of thing appreciated the detail they were putting into it. I love this comment from Jared. Uh, George Lucas looked like a weekend of Bernie's. It kind of did, didn't it? Eh? He's just holding my wings. It's just Bernie. It <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was a grouse movie. <laughs> yes. And, and the military stuff gave them, uh, I guess, enough capital to be able to start buying franchises. And the earlier uh, Hot Toys, which are quite hard to get, um, they still haven't hit that um, that level of accuracy where you look at the figure and you can say that is a dead-on likeness of the actual actor. So some of the earlier ones there are the Superman Returns, which um, you can you can see Clark Kent sort of turning into Superman, but it isn't much better than sort of the standard action figures you could get around at the time. And one of the disappointing ones uh, for me was the Power Loader with Ripley because the Power Loader... Uh, is an absolutely awesome toy and absolutely amazing. And then it comes with a Ripley that is not much better accuracy than sort of a Barbie doll. Um, and there is a newer version of Ripley. And if you get the new version and replace the old version with the new version, it's quite good. But at the time, it was a bit of a disappointment. They got the rights to do um, Rambo. And it, it kind of looks like Still, Sylvester Stallone's got a brother, and that looks like his other brother because it's close, but it's it's not a hundred percent accurate. And um, yep, Dags. Oh, I was going to say his brother was Frank Stallone. Um, the three uh, Black Widows, they actually—I mean, I I've got really bad eyesight. They actually look like people who are dressed up in costume. They actually don't look like action figures at all. 
What do you reckon? Well, they, they are actually hot toys, and I put them there as an example because you can see over the years how much more accurate that uh, hot toys got with the level of detail and likeness. Um, there's the uh, interestingly with the Black Widow there, that isn't super old. It's still going back over a decade. Um, the pictures on the box, Hot Toys are masters of setting up their toys and taking amazing pictures. And sometimes that is a bit of a downfall because when you open the toy, you're a bit disappointed because it's not as good as the pictures on the box. And I remember the original Black Widow being a bit like that where the figure and the advertising looked freaking amazing and then you got it and you're like oh i don't know if that really looks like scarlett johansson at all but the three pictures down the bottom there show the three different well three different versions of black widow and you can tell the first one is a nice black widow sort of a more generic look and then they get one that's a lot more accurate till the final one in that picture and it is you know a dead-on accurate scarlett johansson there's a lot of people who collect hot toys that argue about which is the best version of the figure and which one looks the best and which one you know is going to be worth more i generally think if you look at it and you like it that's the one for you um don't worry about what people online say so you can totally disregard the rest of this um this episode of the show very good. Uh, I like it, Gavin. Uh, you can actually, we well, don't always necessarily self censor our, our, uh, <laughs> our tech, so you can actually say, get away from me, you bitch. So, yeah, very, very cool. <clears throat> so, then we get to sort of the hot toys we're going to be looking at, which is sort of the more modern ones, which. Um, what, what happened with Hot Toys? Uh, the people who ran the company, it's out of Hong Kong, um, they were looking at what their toys were selling for online and they were finding that the hot toys were going for a certain amount but people were customizing heads and the people who were artists who were customizing heads were getting hundreds of dollars for a customizable head because obviously the hot toys came with great articulation came with great clothes and had all these accessories but the heads weren't spot on so people who were collecting them were buying the heads online and putting a custom head on the hot toys body and i think what hot toys did about that was pretty genius instead of doing what some companies might do and try and put these people out of business and say you can't do that because you're infringing on our um, on our license they actually hired a lot of the artists who they considered the best and then um, suddenly the hot toys went from being pretty good figures with pretty good likenesses to pretty good figures with absolutely amazing likenesses because they hired the artists who were doing the customs online to work for the company. And that's one of those examples where if you're a fan of something and you love doing something um, and then you get a job, it's the dream job because you're getting paid to do um, what you do as a hobby. It sort of makes you wonder, it reminds you of um, the waxworks, um, I can't think of the Madame Tussauds waxworks where they try and replicate a person one to one scale in wax. It's almost like the equivalent of that as an action figure. And uh, you are right, some of them just look like photos. Yeah. Over the years, um, you know, I remember certain points in time where toys have taken a leap forward. When I was growing up, you didn't even expect toys to actually look like actors and actresses. You would get the toy and it would be a representation, but the accuracy wasn't there. And I remember walking into alternate worlds and seeing the first McFarlane wave of X-Files and going, oh, my goodness, that actually looks like David Duchovny and um, it looks like Scully and Mulder and I can tell who they're meant to be, be rather than a cross... And that was one of the, the points where I thought, well, they've crossed that line where now all action figures have to look like the, um, the character they're meant to be. And I do remember seeing the first Hot Toys that had like the exact likeness. And I thought, well, that's a new high. And once that benchmark's been hit, there's all these other companies that have to raise their game. So there's Enter Bay and all these other uh, toy companies that kind of had to then start doing the same thing because they just don't look as good if you have something that's okay next to something that's spot on. Um, up until that point, it was statues would be the most accurate looking representations of characters. But then Hot Toys even gave sideshow statues a run for their money. Yeah, there was a bit of a thing going on for a period of time where they wanted to try and do digital scanning of actors' faces to try and get the replica, um, the, the imagery, because you're right, I mean, it was actually very important that the character actually looked like the actor, and, uh, um, yeah, and these guys uh, really nailed it really, really well. But, yeah, that's what they were trying to do for a period of time, and they probably still do do it to, uh, to a large degree as well. So there you go. Uh, Jared has just made him mention he's found the Hot Toys Firefighter 789. Yeah, some of these things, if they look that good as they're like the Hot Toys, you can imagine the prices are not going to be... Uh, for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. So, yes, very, very cool. 
So the first lot of hot toys we're going to look at is uh, Marvel hot toys. Now, I guess hot toys and action uh, heroes go hand in hand because hot toys are very good at um, doing the outfits and the costumes and all the accessories that go with them. Now, it's an interesting story. I had a friend who, when Hot Toys first started coming out, said, do you know what? These are so expensive. I, I'd love to get them all, but I can't buy them all because it's going to just um, send me bankrupt. I'm going to pick my favourite character, which is Iron Man, and I am just going to get the Iron Man Hot Toys because, do you know what? There's only going to be one or two of them, right? Yeah. No, there was. He stopped when he got to about sixty-seven different Iron Man toys, and if you look down the bottom there, there's a selection of the different Iron Man um, figures that Hot Toys have brought out. And and I have have to say, they are all really amazing. They do an absolute incredible job with um, Iron Man. Got a question for you. David said the one the woman that we saw earlier, that wasn't a Hot Toys, was it? I wasn't paying attention, sorry. No, the one we looked at earlier was a, a quarter, uh, no, I think a third scale statue. Yeah. Th yeah, the yeah, cool. third scale statue. If there was a Hot Toy that is missing from the range, actually a Linda Carter Wonder Woman would be one I wish they would produce. That would be absolutely amazing. Very cool. <clears throat> so we can't look at all the Marvel figures, again, because... There have been so many figures over the different movies and the different TV series because Hot Toys really do try and do a good representation of everything that comes out with Marvel and DC. So I thought what would be interesting to look at is Infinity Wars and Endgame because, let's face it, they have everything but the kitchen sink, so you're going to get a representation of most of your favourite um, characters in the Infinity War series. Uh, so if we go to the first ones here, you can see these are later than the ones we were looking at earlier. So this, the, the likenesses is really uh, spot on. I, I, I can't say they're 100% with all of them because, you know, they're done by different artists and some are better than others. But I don't think any of these you would be too disappointed with if you've got some of the ones there, um, Doctor Strange looks exactly like Doctor Strange and you've got Chris Evans as Captain America and they've just done such an amazing job. The one thing you have to be careful with Hot Toys sometimes is um, what I was saying earlier, they put these professional photographs together of all the figures and they often photograph the, po the prototypes. So they will say the figure you get might not be exactly the same as depicted here. And, of course, the prototypes have probably got the original artists have done the first version of the head with the pay perfect um, paint job or anything. So sometimes they're not as 100% accurate as the advertising but more often than not, you're impressed when you see them rather than uh, disappointed. So this is the um, Endgame Infinity Wars collection there. We've got uh, Black Widow with her blonde hair, as I mentioned before, an absolutely amazing Doctor Strange. And then we've got um, Captain America, Star-Lord. And that one, I look at that one and go, I don't know if that looks 100% like Star-Lord. And then we've got um, Thor as well, which is, again, amazing. And the thing that um, keeps Hot Toys going is every version of the movie, they seem, they, they'll they they'll pull out the same character, but everyone seems to be better than the one before. So if you bought the last version, you end up wanting to buy the, the newer version too. So you see there um, Thor's got the light-up eye and light-up armour and stuff like that, which I don't think he has in any of the other versions. And Hot Toys have got to that level of collectability now where most of them sell out on pre-order. So the cheapest way to get the Hot Toys is pre-order it when it comes out because generally on the secondary market, you're looking at a couple of hundred dollars more. Um, so given us after this, if there was a fat dude version of Thor, I would not have uh, thought so. Uh, well, Jared unbelie said, Unbelievably, there was. They did do fat, fat Thor. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, Jared said, well, they look good. And as the classic saying goes, uh, you ain't seen nothing left yet. Uh, and I agree, Black Widow uh, doesn't look as good as the others. The problem is when you've got a couple that look fantastic, it makes the poorer ones really stand out. And clearly, just even this picture, the Doctor Strange looks exactly like Benedict to it, like to a T. So, uh, yeah, that's very cool. And uh, Philip made a mention it's Chris Hemsworth's birthday today. So, uh, there you go. How good is that? Any happy the one returns? Thing I was going to say about um, Black Widow. The one thing I found about Hot Toys is I don't think the women characters are as good as the men, and I think that's uh, because yeah. women look after themselves better than men. So you know, women often in movies, especially, have perfect skin and perfect makeup, 
where when you have a man, they can have a scar or they can not be perfect. And when you're doing a toy, if you can pick up on all those little characteristics in someone's face, it's easier to do a representation of that person. But when you've got sort of a perfect looking, um, not, not a sort Alabaster. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it is so much harder to capture perfection than it is for like a rough old man, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's one of the things I do find in hot toys. It's hard to do a perfect girl. Yeah, which is kind of funny because earlier, like with the Wonder Woman thing with Linda Carter, it looked, looked spectacular. But, uh, yeah, I can see that being an issue. I, I guess it also depends on the quality of the sculpture as well. But uh, anyway, move on. Yeah, and there, there down the bottom there we have the fat version of Thor. Oh, yeah. So um, you've got the Spider-Man uh, again with the, uh, I think that was the Iron Spider version uh, with all the extra arms that come out the back. They've done absolutely fantastic versions of Rocket and Groot. Uh, I just, a, a lot of the times when they do monsters on young human figures, they absolutely knock it out of the ballpark. Um, you've got the, uh, what was he? He was called Ronan, wasn't he? But he's the uh, yeah. Hawkeye in the bottom bottom left there. Uh, and then, as we said, we've got the 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 more portly version of Thor after he had let himself go a little bit, and um, then Iron Man again. And as I've said, they've done many, many different versions of Iron Man. For collectors, um, and I can understand this, they prefer the ones that have Tony Stark's head as well as the Iron Man head because some of them, I guess for cheapness, only come with Iron Man's head, but that one comes with both versions. Um, a couple of comments here. Uh, I agree with you, John. Yeah, you're right. If they paint the hair on and they mold the hair, yeah, it looks way better than actually looking um, like having real hair. Uh, and you are right, Michelle. Yeah, it does explain why Star Lord doesn't look as. Uh, I think it's Chris Pratt is the actor. Uh, doesn't look as flash with that, but you know, yeah, we're not sure. Uh, and you are. Oh, sorry, is it this one? Yes, it's definitely easy to do a character without a face. So there's no like you look at Groot. And Groot looks awesome there, and as we said with Iron Man and Spider Man and all the rest of it. So uh, yeah, no doubt doing organic characters with their organic faces is a lot harder than and, normal. And but they really do have some really good ones. Sorry, it does depend on the face, uh, the the paint work as well because there are people who I've seen who've taken the hot toys and they've repainted it. So they've not changed the sculpt at all. Sculpt at all. And it looks 100% better if you've got someone who can bring out the details and stuff. It does go to show how how um, finicky we've now become. Once upon a time, you couldn't get an action figure for love or money that looked like the actor. Now they're all looking like the actor. And if someone's off, you go, oh, that's a bit dodgy. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, <laughs> just enjoy it. So, yes. Yeah. And he, he, here's another bar. Of course, we've got battle damage, damage Thanos and regular Thanos, which are both fantastic, and they're all in scale. So when you see these lined up, Thanos really is a giant, and he is comparable with to the Hulk in size. And we've got the, the Hulk there with the Infinity Gauntlet. Like I said, they've done really good versions of Rocket and Groot, and I think that goes back down to if you have a non-human character like we're not as critical of that when we look at it. Uh, Nebula down the bottom there um, was another great character. I haven't actually seen that one in person. I've only seen pictures, but that one looks fantastic. And then the older version of Captain America for when he came back sort of as the the, the flashback scene with him in, and that's a, a great version of Captain America as well. So if you collected uh, the Avengers or Infinity War, I think you would have an absolutely amazing collection that you were very happy with. So I need to circle that part just there. It's just so we could say this. It's America's ass. <laughs> well done. Very, very cool. Yes. No, absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, very, very cool. Yeah. So you have and to then, sell a few kidneys to buy some of these things, that's for sure, if you want the whole lot of them, as you said earlier. So, yeah, well, continue it's, on. It's, it's absolutely true. For a long time, I was getting hot toys and I was um, getting them directly from, I think it was Singapore, which was mm. the cheapest way to do it. But it got to the point where I had so many, they were just sitting in the boxes and I couldn't even display them. But, yeah, you, you need a kidney to get all of them, that's for sure. Here's mm. a couple of lineups with them out of the, the packet. Unfortunately, I probably didn't do them big enough to actually see, but you've got the 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 good guys doing the charge there and that is all hot toys and down the bottom you've got a lineup of the the women with um uh, captain marvel in the middle surrounded by some of the other uh, he heroes the, the unusual one there which i think is a great figure I, I think we might have a bigger picture of it later is rescue which is gwyneth paltrow in the blue iron man suit which um didn't really see or i don't remember too much in the movie but made an absolutely fantastic figure and then we've got a different version of captain america there 
We've got the Iron Man with the Infinity Gauntlet, which is, again, another great figure. And then we've got the Iron Patriot uh, down the bottom, which came fully loaded with a whole lot of stuff as well. So, yep, if you um, were collecting this stuff, Infinity War would definitely send you broke. All right. Well, that in mind, Jared has asked how much of these brand new. So you're the, you're the man who knows this stuff? Well, generally, I think the standard price for for Hot Toys, depending on sort of a basic figure version or a mar movie masterpiece, is between two hundred and ninety nine, three hundred and ninety nine, four hundred and ninety nine of the sort of basic starting prices. Some of them do go for more. They've done, um, you know, ones that some come with two bodies and two heads and all this other stuff. And of course, the the more that you um, get with it, the more they cost. I think the last one that I paid for. Um, I think it was Princess Leia Best Ben, and she cost me 299 new. And I think they've sold out and they're going for about 100 more now. And I'm actually looking at buying uh, the Wonder Woman, which we'll look at later in her gold um, outfit from mm. because it's just a fantastic figure. And I think that's 399 So yep. that's around the base price for a hot toy. So price issues aside, like you said about the guy earlier who wanted all the Iron Men, they cost a fortune. You have to sell a kidney or sell your firstborn or whatever, but when you put them on display, they look freaking schmick as. That is the kind of collection that adults will walk into and go, that is as cool as. I actually knew a guy who actually had um, the Star Wars ones from all these years ago. I don't know if it was Hot Toys, some other company, and he spent a fortune on them, but they just looked so good. You go, you know what? I can understand the investment, and you knew they're – price would continue to increase they would never devalue so uh, yeah john, john who's a bit of a hot toy expert is saying the same thing sort of i said 299 399 499 seems yep. to be the and uh, around that the other thing you can tell why hot toys are so good and kind of from what you've just said um and we see this in the shop you have a hot toy in the box and it'll sell and a lot of people um you know like to stick, keep stuff mint in the box but if you take a hot toy out and display it um, it doesn't devalue it. It actually sells faster because they mm. look so good. So yeah. it is one of those things if you like displaying your hot toys, as long as you look after them, there's not much um, difference in value because you can put them back into the packaging and as long as you've only had them out on display, they're like new anyway. Totally agree. So there you go. <clears throat> so we're moving on from um, uh, the Avengers and this is another group of hot toys that look absolutely amazing if you get the set and open them up. And this is, of course, the Guardians of the Galaxy. And um, the Star-Lord for the Guardians of the Galaxy looked a lot better than in likeness than the Star-Lord that came out for um, Avengers. I'm going to cut you off there. So there's a question from Jared. In your opinion, hot toys figures better than NECA. What do you reckon? Can you keep, keep the answer short? Yes. All right. That's, there you go. <laughs> I like it. Short. There you go. All right. Move on. Um, so, again, I was saying the Guardians of the Galaxy and you've got the Star-Lord in this that looks a lot better than the one they released uh, later. And it might come down to they've got a pool of artists that work on the different figures and it might have been one artist did one head and one artist did the other. Or when they do the paint jobs, because they're all painted by hand, so they take quite a while to come out, they might just have one person who has one sensibility doing the paint job for run run and then another person does the other and it, and it means a different outcome but this is a great star lord and star lord when he came out sold out straight away and became a very expensive figure interestingly when they did the original guardians of the galaxy run they did all the figures but not drax which really annoyed everyone and you had to wait about three years for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 to sort of come out before they did Drax and you could have all of the Guardians. And, of course, um, Thanos came out in the Guardians of the Galaxy run th first, and he is quite a nice figure. He comes on a, th a floating throne, uh, so it's all suspended on Perspex poles, and he sort of floats ominously above the rest of the figures. And you've got the Stan Lee figure there because he made... Well, he made a cameo in every single Marvel movie, but in Guardians of the Galaxy uh, 2, they revealed him as one of the Watchers. Um, so they released a figure of him. And I do think down the track he will be one of the figures that really skyrockets in value because, um, mm. you know, he's the father of Marvel. Imagine having one of those autographed by Stan before he passed away. Oh, mate, there you go. And, and I'm going back right, right to the beginning here of the Marvel releases through Hot Toys. Um, and these are some uh, of the releases for Spider-Man 3, which had uh, Venom and Sandman and uh, The Amazing Spider-Man. And, and neither of these uh, movies uh, are sort of as well regarded as some of the other Spider-Man. But I've got to say the hot toys that came out 
of Spider-Man. When that first Spider-Man came out, I was like, this is the best Spider-Man figure I have ever seen. And then the black version of it was quite amazing as well. Uh, the stand that you can see down in the bottom is actually Sandman. So the stand they used to display these figures on was the Sandman from the movie. And then they did the very unique version of the Green Goblin, which a lot of people sort of go, oh, my goodness, that isn't the Green Goblin when they originally brought it out. But now it's it's become one of those things where people look at that costume um, nostalgically and fondly, and it is a hard figure to find and quite a good one. And then um, the other side of that, you've got Electro, which uh, no one's after at all. <laughs> so uh, well, they were some as, of the... as it turns out, John says he has them all. So someone has it. So there you go. Yeah, that's well, that's John's got an amazing collection. And I, I'm impressed by that because they are some very nice figures. Um, I, I know the one thing John doesn't have, and that's uh, room to display everything. It's a common, it's a common problem with a lot of us. Yeah, contact uh, Hot Toys and say, can you guys just build a bigger room? <laughs> and we we uh, come forward in time now to the most uh, recent Spider-Man toys, uh, which are again very very impressive. The only thing I guess that detracts from them for me is. They bring out so many of them. If you wanted to collect Spider-Man, you start out with one or two and go, this is fantastic. And when you get to your 20th one, you're like, oh, do I really need another Spider-Man in a, in a different costume? But here you've got your standard red and blue looking Spider-Man, which is absolutely fantastic with all the different um, hands so you can pose it in different ways. Then you've got a couple of the different Spider-Man suits that if you were a fan of like the Iron Spider or some of the other versions... Down the bottom uh, on the left, you've got the Spider-Man suit from the up-and-coming movie, which um, hasn't been uh, released yet, but the toy pictures are out. And then the uh, the Mysterio there is a great figure. And I think, I don't know if John can um, confirm this for me. Originally, it was going to come with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's head, but I, I think since they've revealed it, it's not coming with a head it's just coming with the globe, which would be a bit disappointing um, because the figures that come with the head, obviously, are a bit more special than the ones that are just uh, the monster head kind of thing. Speaking of which, um, uh, yeah, we didn't add in the you know, this gym, there's a reason for it. You, the, old, the old Doc Ock got missed from the presentation. Yeah, there was a few here. Um, I couldn't fit them all in. There's there's a pro few, few prototypes that are absolutely amazing. Um, they did a prototype for the Rhino from the amazing spider-man movie which was it had been a huge mechanical figure which looked absolutely amazing but it ultimately never came out so there are a few prototypes we're going to show later though which i kind of wish that they did bring out very good uh gavin said 99 percent of your collections in cupboards you're not the only one uh mr gavin a lot of people's collections are in um cupboards and john has said thought it was his hinnies it is with his head. So I knew uh, the earlier versions they showed a head, and then the versions I saw later had the head blurred out, and then the version I was looking at that you pre-order doesn't have the head with it. So maybe the head was an exclusive release for a region somewhere. You never know. There you go. Always important to get a head when you can. So there you go. All right, moving on. After that look at um, Marvel, we're going to cross over and look at DC, and there are just as many DC figures as there were Marvel figures, and some of these are some of my favourite figures they've ever released. Now, the, the Hot Toys 89 Batman, and this is um, showing the 89 and the Batman Returns as well, are some of my favourite um, figures ever. They did absolutely amazing job of these. Um, being a Batman fan, did you ever get this, Dags? Or no, was this after I couldn't, you afford, I couldn't afford this stuff. And this was after I long, I'd long since stopped collecting when this stuff was being produced. So I, I kind of, I kind of look at this and laugh because when, when this came out, I think it was three hundred and ninety nine dollars. And at the time, I thought, oh, gee, that's a lot for a Batman figure. Very hard to get one under a thousand bucks now. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are after it, and they were so thoughtful with what they put in these figures. Um, they even had in the the back cape, they had little. Um, plastic um, rods so when he holds his hand up the cape actually stays furled out rather than co collapsing down yeah. they had different versions of the head uh, well of his chin from underneath the head so with magnets you can take the different heads out and you can have like a bloody version a neutral version and then an angry version and then they had about six different pairs of hands and hands in gloves and hands without of gloves all the accessories that came from the um came from the movie like the joker said where does he get such wonderful toys um yeah. so hot toys batman 89 or the batman returns they're both fantastic toys um if you can ever get your hands on one and you're a batman collector you could do a lot worse 
Well, John certainly agrees with you too. And it's very funny because with that in mind, I've got to say the sculpt of this is awesome. That looks so much like Jack Nicholson. It's not funny. Well, this this is, one of, again, one of my – there are, are a few favourite toys, and this is one of my favourite toys of all time. The Jack Nicholson Joker is absolutely stunning. Um, you can look at that from any angle, and it looks mm. like a mini version of Jack Nicholson. Mm. It's absolutely amazing. They've done two different versions of this. They've done this version and the mime version, but I'm only showing this one because this is the, the better version. Um, and, again, it came – fully loaded with all these different um, accessories. So you've got all the different hands and then a lot of the stuff that the Joker used in the movie, like the the, the chattering teeth and the bag with the, the laughing in and his cane and his hat. And uh, the interesting thing about Hot Toys is they have this um, system in some of their toys where you can move the eyes so you can take the back of the hair off because it's fitted in with a magnet and there's a little switch and you can roll the eyes round to the position you want them and i tell you if you do that with the joker it is absolutely creepy it looks like jack nicholson is looking at you um it is one of the uh not just best toys i would say one of the best toys ever made in any range ever um, so it's so, very interesting sorry go on no 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 go ahead so it's very interesting because a lot of the uh, action figures, the eyes will go straight ahead and you have the complete uncanny valley thing going on. So if you can move the eyes to a different position, it actually gives the figure a lot more of a realistic appearance like it does in the figure over here. And I like the idea that if you put it on an angle on the display, and, but you have the eyes turning towards you, it makes it more lifelike rather than just having them straight ahead. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very good concept. And whoever thought of that would have been thinking, mate, that is just an ingenious idea. So... Uh, yeah, get it, it is, it is interesting though, and John would John would know this trick, and it's a trick for other collectors out there. Um, some people get the hot toy and they see it, and the eyes are cross-eyed, and they take it back to the shop and say this is damaged, and then the shop sends it back to the distributor, and the distributor just knocks it out cheap. But it's not damaged at all. All you needed to do was put your finger on the eye and push it into line. And it's just because somewhere in the shipping it's it's come out of line. So sometimes you can see hot toys listed like the eyes aren't correct or something. And it's just because the person doesn't realise that they've got this dynamic eye system mm -hmm. where you can actually move the eyes around. So if you're looking for um, a cheap hot toy, you can get lucky and find one that's uh, cross-eyed and then fix it with just the tiniest of little effort and you've got the perfect hot toy. So if you want to get Batman and get his eyes to go like that, so uh, there you go. Uh, do the eyes follow you around the room if you want them to. So there you go. If, very, very if, cool. If you're, um, if you're lucky, yeah. Yep, exactly right. Very cool. Uh, and, fall, they are the window to the soul. Go on. They are. Um, and these are some of the other versions of Bat Batman they've done. Now, Hot Toys have obviously been very successful with Batman. Batman is, across all the different toy lines, one of the biggest selling characters ever. In fact, before Star Wars came back, I think um, Batman was outselling even Star Wars. The two most popular action figures are Batman and Spider-Man, and obviously that reflects in what Hot Toys have chosen. So there's a few different versions here, and again, we were in the era when Hot Toys were getting likenesses spot on. So you would get Christian Bale, and it looks just like Christian Bale, or you would get the different bat suits from the different movies, and they're so movie accurate. The pictures look like they're production stills from the movie in a lot of cases. Um, you made a comment about the eyes, and John said he got the eye. I think that's what he's referring to with the eyes. Uh, I like this comment from Michael. He, did, he just didn't miss anything important. Um, so let us just restart the entire show from like an hour ago. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, no, you didn't. So that's okay, Michael. All the important stuff is coming up. So here we go. And, again, these are some of my favourite collectibles. Um, the ones they did for the Nolan Batman movies are absolutely amazing set of figures. So, again, I like to theme figures, and if I was going to collect a Batman set, apart from the 89, and um, which are a, a no-brainer for me, the, the Christopher Nolan Batman um, series, the figures they released on those are stunning. You've got the Scarecrow there, which is a fantastic version of the Scarecrow. You've got Harvey Two-Face, which came with two heads, so you can have his regular head or his half-scarred head. Um, Batman was a fantastic version of Batman. They did a couple of different versions, but all of them were pretty good. There are a few people who said the first one, the head looked a bit too, too small, but I just think the helmet was quite... His helmet was quite fitted. And then I would say that the Heath Ledger Joker was just as accurate and just as um, desirable and collectible as the um, Jack Nicholson one. 
Uh, I just like Jack Nicholson better because I grew up with that figure, so it was always a dream to sort of get it. And then the Wonder, uh, Wonder Woman, then the Catwoman was an absolutely amazing figure as well, and they did do a really good likeness of Anne Hathaway on, on that one. Uh, two things. Uh, sorry, well, uh, the Red Batman, where's that from? We've got a question from... Uh, that one's uh, Batman Beyond, so I think that one's still available now. And the um, that was a t uh, I think originally. Well, there's the comic books, and then there was the cartoon series, and I think that they're going to do that version as a movie as well. So cool. that's one of the. Yeah, I thought it was from a cartoon. That's cool. I like when you look at the faces here. You can almost like put the words in his mouth. It's like, where are they? <laughs> so uh, yes, a very very good. Well, uh, is... And there was a question here. I'm Gavin, do you get a coin with Two-Face? Probably, but it'd be in scale with the character. So it'd be a tad yeah, on the tiny you can, side. You can see in that he is holding a coin in one of the pictures. And then they um, then they did um, different versions of the Joker. So you could get the deluxe version, uh, which had different heads and different masks. Yeah. And uh, they had a seated version where he's in the, uh, the cell getting interrogated. They did really amazing versions of um, Commissioner Gordon and... Um, and of, I've forgotten the guy's name. Um, Bane. Well, Bane, Bane's there, but next to Commissioner Gordon, there was the guy who ends, ends up saying, oh, my oh. nickname is Robin. Uh, yeah, he's um, he's meant to be Robin. Um, yeah, yeah, Grayson, Dick, whatever. I don't know, I forgot. Yeah. And then yeah. that, the, the one thing they did with the Batman toys, which they didn't do with a lot of other toy lines, they actually made vehicles. And the vehicles are absolutely amazing um dags often tells people who come into the shop that the box for the uh 89 batmobile would make a good top coffee table because it is that huge it is. but they did um they did uh the bike there and they did the the tumbler and they did two different versions so they've got the camo one that bane's um standing on top of and they did the black batman version of it and all of them are amazing toys but it gets to the point where do you have enough room to put them out because you really start to need an entire coffee table with a glass centre to sort of display them in. Up the top there as well is the Batman armoury, which um, has the bat suit and different um, accessories, and it came with a Bruce Wayne and an Alfred, and the Alfred is an absolutely amazing figure of Michael Caine as well. So if you have all of these and display these, it's another awesome display, especially if you're a Batman fan. Yeah, you can just see there's a bit of money involved in buying these vehicles. Um, do you remember when the first production photographs came out of the Tumblr way back in the early, mid-2000s? People thought it was the shittest Batmobile in the universe, and then the movie comes out and people just loved it overnight. So uh, there you go. Um, fans, are very, fans are very fickle. That happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's freaking annoying is what it is. The the Catwoman on the bike, that looks magnificent, doesn't it? I mean, it's a blurry photo, but uh, you can just imagine how spectacular that would be. That, that yeah. is very, very cool. But, uh, yes, I'm just seeing dollar signs there. Like, if the figures are a few hundred bucks, then those vehicles must be pushing close to a grand. So uh, there you go. Very, very groovy. Uh, I like this. Yeah, instant mortgage. Yeah, totally agree with you, Mark. No doubt about that at all. And um, going to sort of another corner of the DC universe, which is a bit, a bit relevant at the moment, is the Suicide Squad. And um, the Suicide Squad... I guess for me the figures were a bit of a, a miss, actually. I didn't like that version of the Joker. Uh, you can obviously see that a lot of work went into it and a lot of design uh, and a lot of um, accessories. Um, and then they did a lot of different versions of Harley Quinn as well, which is obviously because she's such a popular character. Now, Chad, who I work with, isn't um, isn't online commenting today, but he was disappointed with every single one because... They didn't really, he said they didn't capture her. It was disappointing that um, the standard Harley Quinn had her mouth open. There wasn't sort of a neutral pose um, where sometimes they do give various heads to um, the characters so you can choose which pose you want. So I, I, I think the Suicide Squad looked fantastic if you like the Suicide Squad, but for me, I guess it was the, the movies didn't do anything for me, so it wouldn't have been ones I collected. But I... I included them because there's a lot of people who do like that um, aesthetic and the colourful nature of the Suicide Squad, and the new movie was pretty awesome too, so we'll have to see what comes out there. Up the top there, you see the entire Suicide Squad. I don't think they ever released um, Captain Boomerang or Killer Croc, so those are the prototypes. Uh, I don't think Katana was released either. They did release um, Will Smith's character that's there, um, but... They didn't release everything. So sometimes they do show stuff that doesn't get released. 
Um, I love this one from John. Yeah, Chad never closes his mouth. <laughs> very, very cool. And we move on, of course, to Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman is another one of those classic characters from DC and they have released a few different versions of. And it is another one of those figures where I think some of them they get spot on and some of them are not quite right. Um, I, know, I, I think the Wonder Woman in the bottom corner there where she's dressed in her Amazonian gear doesn't look as uh, close to Gal Gadot as the two figures at the top. And it surprises me because it's the same actress and they've obviously got the, the heads for the moulds, uh, but it's just some people, uh, are so, some of the finishes are better than others. Um, I think the Wonder Woman figures are pretty amazing um, when you set them up and um, they're on display, they, they sell straight away because it is such a stunning figure. But again, it shows you that um, just depending on the finish and how it looks is uh, really determines how accurate the likeness is. Well, it's very funny because I look at this one down here and I'd swear that was a photograph of the actress and that one up the top there is the second photograph of the actress. But yeah, the bottom one, 100%, I would have thought, oh, it's the real person. So yeah, very, very groovy. Yeah. And this is the figure I was talking about earlier, which I think is the la last one I've actually got on pre-order, which is the 1984 version where she's in the winged gold suit, which I think will be an absolutely stunning figure. And that's still available at the moment. So you can still order the regular suit version where she's just in her um, blue and red with the lasso. And you can order the, um, the golden wing version, um, which I think is due out pretty soon. Uh, but that looks absolutely fantastic and the likeness is again i think spot on with that one yeah i like how you could do the two different sets of wings depending how much space you've got to display it i mean ideally you want the the broad um wing span that looks pretty schmick and uh uh even michelle's happy with it so uh yes it's uh, pretty spectacular so yeah. yeah um yeah joe looks like he wants to order one and buy one from you so that sounds pretty cool and john agrees <laughs> yeah. so uh, yes it is very very uh, schmick no doubt about that and this is another one of my favourite, not just um, toys, uh, hot toys, but uh, toys ever. This is the Christopher Lee, uh, Christopher Lee, Christopher Reeve version. He's not a, of, he's not a vampire, you know. It's not Dracula <laughs> flying around. <laughs> uh, of of the of the seventies Superman, which is an absolutely amazing figure. And I think this was the first hot toy I saw and picked up and go, do you know what? I cannot tell the difference um, between this and the actual Christopher Reeve where they've got the hair perfect, the eyes perfect, the skin tone perfect. The costume is amazing. The display that it comes on um, is from the Fortress of Solitude with all the crystals. And um, then what really sets it off is the box that it comes in. So the box that it comes in is actually the Superman shield. So you have that amazing box. And then when you open it, there's um, Superman inside. And I think not only does it go to show that um, Hot Toys are a great company, but they're very thoughtful on their packaging. And you have to have been a fan to come up with the packaging. Um, they show a lot of love and respect for some of the characters. So this is, again, one of my favourite toys ever. Yeah, if I recall, I've got a friend of mine, I think Spankin, uh, the actual the human Spankin has one of these. Is the, the costume's actually material, isn't it? It is. Um, yeah. And I'll tell you what, all the hot toys, not just Superman, if you try to change the costumes, good luck on ever getting them back on again. Um, I've... I've had the aliens costume uh, for the different people in the space Marines. And I've taken like the jumpsuit off to try and change it and get it to look better. Good luck with ever getting it on again. That would be the one comment that I would say about um, hot toys, leave them in the costume that they come in and don't try and mm, don't try and change the costume in any way. So, so if you're a person out there thinking, oh, yeah, the Wonder Woman figure, I'll try and get the gear off it. Don't even bother trying. Um, was there a George Reeves Superman figure ever made? I would have. I got, I got it wrong last time. So I'm assuming the answer is no. Is that correct? No, they've never done a George Reeves Superman. I think it would be a big seller, but um, they've never done one. Very, very cool. All right. And here we have a few other hot toys because we're moving on from Marvel and DC. And like I said, you can't look at you can't look at everything because it'd be three or four episodes of going through. But there's a, another group of just amazing hot toys. The Deadpool is amazing. The Venom that's been announced is pretty amazing. There's a fantastic version of Jarrell um, there from Superman Returns, but it's you know the classic Superman Jarrell which is amazing. There's your Matrix figure that you can pose and do the, the backwards um, 
the backwards lean without breaking it. And it actually <laughs> comes with it actually Snaps. comes with bullets with um, like trails on, so you can like make the bullets look like they did in the movie. Robocop, Avatar, The Godfather, Michael Jackson, uh, John Matrix from Commando, The Crow. They really have done some amazing hot toys. So it's funny because I'm looking at this picture, the Arnie picture over here, right? I mean, admittedly, he's got the camouflage, looks spectacular, look like it's like a photograph of the real thing. But I thought if you had got this one up here looking like Marlon Brando, like right on the money, that would have been schmick, but it looks nothing like him. So that's yeah, that I was, was, that was disappointing. That was one of their very early ones that weren't photo accurate. It's still good, yeah. but it's not perfect. Yeah, yeah. So considering that once you start, you start, um, uh, what's the term, setting this particular standard, right, and everybody expects the standard. So if someone says, oh, they're releasing a blah figure tomorrow, you go, oh, I expect that to be like walked off the screen. And if it's even minimally imperfect, you go, well, that's a disappointment because the standard now is so high and people are just so used to it. So, yeah, yeah it's it's a catch-22 in a lot of ways and it's really um, hard. Yeah, you know, yeah, so, yes. Yeah. So these were amazing set of hot toys. These were the Rocky series. Um, and because they came out long, long after the Rocky movies, they uh, picked and choose the, the different characters from different movies in the franchise. And I think they did an amazing job on all of them. So even though they're from that sort of earlier time where they weren't photo accurate, I think they actually did an amazing job with the Rocky stuff. Uh, the Rocky Balboa in the classic Stars and Stripes short is an absolutely amazing figure. And then you've got, um, you know, the Clubber Lang and you've got your Ivan Drago and you've even got um, you've even got uh, Apollo Creed there, again, in all the Stars and Stripes stuff. And these are quite hard figures to find now. Um, I've had them a couple of times come through and sold them. I haven't got any of them. And now you're looking at thousands of dollars each to get them. Um, they are fantastic figures. Um, so uh, John has made a comment about the Brando is a 1500 bucks plus value. Uh, yeah, okay, it might be, but it, unfortunately it doesn't look like um, uh, the character to me. Well, um, interestingly enough, the early Hot, Hot Toys figures that we showed at the beginning that are crap, they all go from 600 to to 1000 as well, and it's more about their collectability than how accurate they look, I think. Well, if they've reissued them with new sculpts, yeah, you're right, the original ones would just go through the roof in terms of value. Um, the Vile has asked about whether they did a creature for the Black Lagoon. I assume they didn't do any of the Universal Monsters. Is that right? No, they haven't. Necker have done Creature from the Black Lagoon, and it's quite a good figure, but uh, Hot Toys haven't done that. Okay. Uh, and, Gavin, yeah, there is a lot of pressure. That's the thing, but it's a pressure that they've created themselves, unfortunately. So um, that's what I was saying earlier. Once you've set that standard, even if you just dip below that standard, people go, well, I'm going to buy that's complete shit. It's not as good as it should be because everything else is so good. That's the downside of being so good. But if you can maintain, maintain that standard, mate, you'll have people spending thousands of dollars on these things because um, the quality is there. So, yeah, it's yeah. a catch-22, as I said earlier. It really is. And here, are, what I was talking about earlier is the is the later versions of um, Ripley <laughs> and the Alien, um, the Alien franchise. So that's the Alien Big Chap, which is the Alien from the first Alien movie, and we've got Ellen Ripley from the first Alien movie, and then we've got a couple of the other members of the crew, and the spacesuits on them, which were from uh, Mobius, the French illustrator's designs, are absolutely amazing. Although when you have the toys and you look at them, you can go, ah. Oh, these were made out of cricket pads. That's what they did the original, um, the original spacesuits out of. They're just sort of modified. But you have amazing likenesses. You have the face hugger, different versions of the head with the face hugger on. Um, you've got all these clips and things that you can take on and off. And this is what I was saying before. Do not take them on and off. Do not change the heads. There's a little tiny light in the um, helmet like the original movie that sort of shines up onto the actor's face that you can turn on. If you take the head off, I have never liked to change the head. I've never been able to do it without breaking the cord that that um, operates the light. So these are some of those things that display straight out of the box, but don't go trying to pl try play with them and change them around. Um, it's a very good point from Adzi. Oh, hang on, I've just lost it. Adzi saying, if you are paying a premium, you expect perfection. That's a fair call. Uh, so pressure's on them to get it right. So, uh, yes, a very, very cool. That's um, absolutely true. And I do have a criticism with Hot Toys, which we can talk about because we're looking at the aliens, which I think is a bit bad. If you are paying museum, these are museum quality um, collectibles, 
I don't think some of them last as long as they should. They use rubber on some of them, and particularly the alien warriors that split, um, you know, if they're not, like, like if they're not moved, um, you know, they become very dry very fast, and you don't want to be paying, you know, $500 for a figure that, you know, five years from now, as soon as you move it, the rubber splits on it. Now, this is what I was saying about the early version of Ripley. You can see this is... It's in one of those weird things, the aliens figures came out before the alien figures. So the aliens figures, although, you know, they're hot toys, they aren't as nice or as accurate as the alien figures that came out a few years later. So again, you've got the Ripley that is a good figure, but it's not, it's not Sigourney Weaver. And then you've got the absolutely ama amazing power loader, but what lets it down is the Sigourney Weaver figure. And I have seen people take the costume off of this figure and put it onto the alien figure, which has a dead-on accurate Sigourney Weaver head, and put it in the power loader, and that looks absolutely amazing. You do have the Space Marines down the bottom there, and that's what I was talking about as well before. Do not undo the clips. Do not try and use different weapons and stuff. Just leave the ones that come with them because you get yourself into a world of trouble with trying to put them back in the box and trying to get them back to how they originally looked. So if you're not sure, you look at that and you go, oh, yeah, that's Ellen Ripley, believe it or not. <laughs> That's, that's such a dad joke that even I'm not going to comment. <laughs> I've got to get one in sooner or later. <laughs> and, these are, uh, and these are an example of what I was saying. When you have an alien or a non-human figure, they look absolutely amazing. Um, all the aliens they have done uh, right from the beginning have been amazing screen-accurate versions of the figures. But unfortunately, what, what I said before is I find so many of these broke because they're made out of these um, rubber material that looks screen-accurate, but... Um, rubber and latex in toys doesn't really go so well because it's it dries out and it splits really easily. So you have to be really careful with these figures if you have them just to keep them in good condition. Um, and for those out there who don't know, whenever you see a model of a face hugger, regardless of any scale, size or anything like that, it's called Harvey. Okay, It's an in-joke. We call all of our face huggers Harvey. Harvey the face hugger. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> And so where you've got the um, the aliens, not far behind, you're going to get the Predators. And the Hot Toys Predators are absolutely phenomenal. They have done many different versions of the Predators right back to there. We're looking at sort of um, Dutch, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, it is an older Hot Toy, but they still did an amazing job with it. And the original uh, Predator from the movie Predator. And then next to that, we have the Predator 2. Um, City Hunter Predator, which is, again, another very desirable figure and quite hard to find. But even the um, even the Predators from Aliens vs. Predator and Predators were great figures. You can see the Aliens vs. Predator there actually comes with a decapitated alien skull, um, well, an alien head through a Predator sphere. And then what I liked about the Predators figures, they all had a bit of character. So you had the, the tracker, which came with the sort of Predator dog creature, which every single one of those spines, when you display it, you put in individually. So it's quite a fun figure to, to set up. And then they have the Predator Falconer, which comes with the Falcon, and then the Berserk of Predator, which is just like a, you know, a full-on Predator with the human skull and um, uh, a spine ripped out. So the Predators make an amazing display as well, and they are fantastic figures. So when you're putting the, the things in the back of the dog, right, and you think, let's make a story about this. You could call it a spine-tingling adventure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's two for two, Dags. <laughs> and, of course, um, we have the Terminator. Now, the Terminator figures for Hot Toys are, again, all awesome. Uh, again, with Schwarzenegger, they've always managed to get, like, a really accurate likeness. And not only have they got the more... A recent likeness, but they've they've done the 80s likeness really well, the 90s likeness really well, and also the more current ones. So whoever does the Schwarzenegger does a good job. All of them are movie accurate, right down to um, the designs of the T-shirts that were in the original movie that he stole off those sort of punks at Griffith Park University when he first sort of turned up. The endoskeletons are absolutely amazing. Uh, they look like they've got the Stan Winston original designs and replicated it. So you can just imagine for a toy company how how detailed and how accurate that, that would be. So they look uh, absolutely stunning. They did a really good job of, um, of Sarah Connor. Uh, 
I guess, again, when you've got all these amazing Schwarzenegger and Terminator, uh, the Sarah Connor figure is never going to quite live up to the other the other figures. But she she looks really good. She looks close to Linda Hamilton. Um, and if you've got all the other figures, it's not going to look out of place getting her. And then they did the T-1000, and that is also another amazing figure. They have actually captured his sort of eerie look um, in the toy. And he, of course, comes with all the different hands, right to the point where you can get his his finger, which is a normal finger, then it's a little bit elongated, then it's even longer and even longer. So you can put the hand on it with the length of metal spike that you want. And what I thought was amazing with the Arnold Schwarzenegger, they even gave a T-1000 in liquid form with him punching through the head. So you can understand from that point of view, if you're a Terminator fan, you're going to be pretty happy with all the different versions of Terminator they've done. Now, I haven't um, put any pictures of them up. They did do um, figures for Terminator Salvation and, and Genesis, and they are pretty accurate, but they're not as good as the Terminator and Terminator 2 figures. All right, very quickly. So are the sunnies removable from the picture way over here? Uh, yeah, they are. Very cool. All right. Uh, are the T1800s uh, endos actually metal, metalized plastic? They'd be metalized. I'm sure they wouldn't be actually metal. They metal have, they? They've, done different, they've done different versions. So there are some metal ones and there are some that are just metalized plastic. Very good. Okay. Uh, I agree with Michelle. I think the, some of the commando um, Arnie's were a little bit on the better looking, but that's okay. Uh, and if you, uh, oh yeah, I like this one. Where's Wolfie? Uh, don't you mean Max? That was the actual name of the dog. Um, and I like the idea if you've got your T1000, like you've got this one just here and you really want to get the metal version, stick it in the microwave and stick it on for about 15 minutes. There's your metal. <laughs> Might not look the same as the movie, but at least he's liquid. So there you go. Very cool. So, we move away from um, the science fiction to uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean was a very popular range for Hot Toys. And again, they did a pretty amazing job. And I think this comes down to when you have sort of these more historical figures, you can tell there are some people who do the design work, who absolutely love researching all the costumes and getting them screen accurate and putting all this detail in that you just don't see normally in figures. My favourite part of the Caribbean figure is uh, Davy Jones. He is an absolutely fantastic figure, also one of the hardest hot toys to find. He, he doesn't turn up for sale even very much. Um, they did a, a few different versions of Captain Jack, and I think all of them are pretty good. They did a pretty good likeness of uh, Johnny Depp. Um, Again, you can see with the um, Elizabeth Swan, they did her in sort of her pirate gear and she maybe isn't as accurate as some of the male figures. And then they did Will Turner and one of the other pirate captains. And I think, I think again, if you buy figures and group them together, it's an amazing set. Yeah, I knew a couple of kids who used to take their Davy Jones to school, but nobody ever got to see them because I always left them in their locker. Oh... <laughs> <laughs> uh... No, the jokes just roll out, don't they? <laughs> anyway. I thought you were going to talk about the monkeys, but uh, there you go. <laughs> um, and, of course, another one of my favourite hot toys is Indiana Jones. <laughs> and I think um, Harrison Ford is a hard actor to capture the likeness of. And I, I think I've noticed the older he's gotten, again, the more character he gets in his face, the easier it is. But um, the, the Harrison Ford as Han Solo and as Indiana Jones is very hard to capture the likeness of. And Hot Toys have actually done a really amazing job. The Indiana Jones deluxe figure is one of the best sets you can get. It comes fully loaded with everything. Um, you can get him in his standard indie outfit, leather jacket and hat, but they also give a different outfit, which is his Well of Souls sort of Arab um, turban and and clothes for when he goes down into the Well of Souls. The actual figure comes with the fertility idol and stand and the backdrop so you can display it sort of in the cave from the start of the movie. Now, one of the things that um, NECA did with uh, NECA sort of, sorry, um, is, am I talking about NECA? No, I'm talking about um, Sideshow, sorry. Yeah, okay. One of the things that Sideshow did they produce hot toys and they get them in, but Sideshow also produced their own toys. Now, Sideshow produced a Well of Souls environment and it is an amazing piece. So it is like a statue, so it's made out of polystone. Uh, you can see the hot toys figure in it there. That isn't a fit picture that they've mocked up. That is the actual toy of the Well of Souls that you could buy to display your Indiana Jones in. And it was reversible, so you could have 
the inside of the Well of Souls um, that was in the movie, and the back of it had all hieroglyphics um, carved into it as well that you can see in the bottom right corner. So if if you into Indiana Jones, they only did the the one figure, but boy, is that an amazing figure, and that is uh, another hard figure to track down. Yeah, I think it's the map room. The Well of the Souls is where the Ark was kept. So um, there you go. You're absolutely right. That's the that's the map room. Yeah. Thank you very much. So there you go. Never try and out nerd the nerd. But yeah, I got to admit the map room map room layer. Oh, that looks schmick as. Yeah, that is very very cool. And all I can see there is just space that would sit on a coffee table all by itself. So uh, there you yeah. go. We go back in time now because they have done um, older retro figures, and this is uh, Planet of the Apes. Uh, Planet of the Apes Hot Toys are, again, some of those hot toys that uh, are quite desirable because they come from an older franchise which has like a, a fan base that snapped them all up and then they just don't turn up. But uh, they produced three different figures, the uh, General Ursa and then an, a, a gorilla uh, soldier and a gorilla uh, general. Um, and, again, they're all movie accurate. They look amazing, again, because they do non-human figures fantastically and they come with absolutely load of accessories that are all screen accurate so if you're a planet of the apes fan the hot toys are probably out of the new merchandise just the best stuff there is um yeah i don't agree with the idea of using the fur as was discussed earlier by somebody who said about you know using real fur it doesn't work i mean urso looks grouse with the with the he the helmet on but the actual yeah. fur by itself doesn't doesn't yeah, it actually ruins it i think so they needed to just sculpt the fur and just put that in so uh but uh, but the actual rest of it though looks really really cool yeah yeah and then again these are some of my favorite hot toys the mars attacks hot toys and these are quite hard to find now as well and i just think the design of the aliens from mars attacks translated really well to a toy because before it was cg they originally designed them as stop motion figures so they obviously had them planned out how they were going to look and how they would be articulated and because they did that when you make a toy of it you can go to those original um, designs and translate it to a toy and they are absolutely amazing they look like little versions of the aliens from mars attacks yeah ak, 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 ak. Ak, ak, ak. Yeah, they do look very schmick, actually, i got to say. Yeah, very, they, very, very So they very released good. two versions. They released the Mar, uh, the Martian Ambassador and the and the Martian Soldier, and, and both of them are pretty awesome figures. If you like Mars Attacks, um, you could definitely track them down. And they had the rollable eyes, so you could adjust the eyes, and they also had adjustable mouths, so you could um, have the mouth in a different position depending on how you like to display it. Jeez, everybody's into it now. It's like, ak, 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 ak. <laughs> <laughs> the most quotable quote from the entire film. Love it. There you go. And we rock up um, to some more recent hot toys, although they're quite hard to, to find, and that's the Back to the Future hot toys. And, again, these are some of my favourite hot toys. You have got um, Marty and the Doc. They've done two different waves. The first one that came out was Marty from Back to the Future, and then they released Marty and the Doc from Back to the Future Part 2. And again, with um, the Hot Toys, they did a DeLorean. So they did a one-sixth scale DeLorean for the um, Back to the Future Hot Toys. And that is an absolutely amazing piece as well. With all the Hot Toys vehicles, they're usually electronic in that. All the time circuits light up. The, the headlights and brake lights uh, light up. Um, they have the gold wing doors, which is classic for the DeLorean. And you can see just the level of accuracy with Marty standing there. If you were a Back to the Future fan, um, you were really well treated with the hot toys. And I don't know about you, but if you look at the pictures of Michael J. Fox, it does look like photos of, of the actor. Um, did they have an Einstein? No, they didn't have an Einstein. And I think originally they had... Um, Pepsi Perfect, and I think they had to phase it out because they couldn't get the rights from Pepsi to to use it. Or it might, I might be wrong. It might be Nike. They couldn't use Nike Nike shoes in, in it, so they had to use ones that kind of look like them. So not a hundred percent accurate, but you can get online and buy the Nike shoe upgrade if you want them to look a hundred percent like the ones on on the movie. Probably cost more than the actual real thing. Uh, Mark has asked, do you own these? Um, I've got the original from. Back to the Future. I did have the other two, and when the shop opened, I put them in the shop. And I think I think John grabbed one of them, maybe, um, that they sold pretty fast. Um, that's a good point by Jared. You could just 3D print your own Einstein to make it fit in the gap. So there you go. Done. Love it. Yeah, there oh, we go. there we go. So I think we've got something we've got to be showing in a sec. So I'm going to just cut this off. 
so I can actually see where I'm at. So, uh, yes, is there anything you wanted to talk about while I move on to the next bit? So that oh, hang on. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You wanted to talk about what's happening next week. So it's my mistake, actually. I've pressed the wrong button. So give me a oh, second. No. So, You're cracking yeah. the jokes and pushing the wrong buttons. Uh, yes, exactly right. So, yes, what did you want to say? So, so that is our presentation on uh, Hot Toys. And there are a lot that we didn't cover because there are a lot of Hot Toys. But I, I think that gives everyone an idea of why Hot Toys are so popular and why some people like have houses full of these Hot Toys because they are an amazing collectible and they are one of the modern collectibles that I enjoy collecting and love. Um, most of the time with Hot Toys, if you are looking for any, we can order the new ones in through the shop for you. Um, like I said, most of them do sell out on, well, the popular ones sell out on pre-order. A lot of the Mandalorian stuff disappeared really fast. Uh, and we haven't looked at the Star Wars stuff. And down the track, we'll look at Star Wars Hot Toys because that's an entire show by itself. Um, was there anything you wanted to add, Dags? No, I don't think so. I'm just uh, teeing up a couple of doodads here. So there's something you wanted to talk about for next week. Is that right? Yeah. So one of the other things that I get asked in the shop quite a lot what should I buy as an investment? And I always say, don't buy anything as an investment. Buy what you like because it doesn't matter um, if you buy what you like. If it goes up or down in value, you've got a collectible that you like. But next week, we are going to look at Doc Brown's Guide to Future Collectibles. Um, and what we thought we would do is look at stuff that's around now that might be valuable in the future. Um, and we're not talking about pop finals <laughs> um but we're looking at stuff that isn't like batman isn't isn't ro like existing um franchises new stuff that's around now that um might be something that's worth money down the down the track but what we were looking at is doc brown is going to be our guide because apparently uh bifco used the time machine to go back in time and buy Funko and has changed all future collectibles to pop vinyls. So we are trying to get people looking at other stuff they can buy to stop the future of the collectible market being dominated by Bifco, Funko, Pops. So I pressed the button too early. Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> That's what happens when we don't rehearse these things. So none, of, none, of our, none of our, this is live, none of our videos work. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly right. So, so does that mean that, uh, putting it simply, um, Hang on, wrong button. Very cool. How good is that, yeah? Yeah, to be continued next week. Oh, there you go. How's that? We go all this way and I screw it up by pushing the wrong button at the wrong time. So there you go. Very good stuff. Oh, there we go. We've had enough um, <laughs> back in time. Yes, it's very, very cool. Um, I don't know. Uh, yes, it's all very good. Yes, a lot of hot toys out there. A lot of money to be spent. Uh, the kind of thing that little kids will look at and go, oh, can I have one of those? You go, no. Nah. <laughs> so be lucky if uh, you get one in your life for a Christmas gift, let alone hundreds and hundreds of them. So, uh, yes, very, very cool. Um, any final words that you want to chuck in before we finish up there, Mr. Aaron? Not really. Thanks, friends, for joining us tonight. Hope you've enjoyed um, the presentation on Hot Toys. We always read all the comments that uh, come in after the show um, with suggestions and feedback. Um, so if you want to ask us anything, we, we, we do get back to you or we bring it up next week. Uh, but apart from that, I hope everyone will join us next week where we go back to the future to look at future collectibles. Well, if you don't like this show at all, just watch Aaron and his live shows that he's doing at his store every day. Now, they're, 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 they're far more, they get way more likes and a lot more excitement than this particular program. So there you go. And you get to see his face all the whole time. How good is that? So there you go. And otherwise, though, make sure you keep all your collectibles uh, mint in box. Or rip them off the card. See you later. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.